Oh wait, I can show what I'm playing. Because the video is so cute too. I feel like this is a good vibe to start the episode. Of course, because we have special guest Ten City joining us later for a little interview, and it was so fun to talk to them that I went down a rabbit hole listening to some of their old classics. And of course, one of their big ones was That's the Way Love Is. Like, look how swaggy. Look at these outfits. Look at these dance moves. How can you not be vibing? all right i guess i'll get down to business even though it's fun to just vibe to the song uh welcome back to another episode of the news floor it's me again valerie uh i'm excited we're gonna talk to 10 city like i mentioned a little bit later in this episode they are such wonderful folks and they're coming back after i think it's 25 years of a hiatus which is amazing. Um, legendary Chicago house group and the folks behind this song. But there's also a new one called Be Free and also an album coming out. So we talked a little bit about all that. But of course, before we get to that, we're also going to talk about the news as we usually do. There is stuff happening. Carl Cox has a book. The UK is thinking about how to get out of coronavirus. I've got a crazy hair that I'm going to try and fix. But, you know, that's a me problem. That's not really a dance music news thing. Um, And we're going to talk a little bit, and I want to hear everyone's thoughts as they kind of flow into the chat about Elements Festival, which is going to be coming back in 2021. A very rare confirmation that a actual in real life festival is happening. They are selling tickets very soon, and they're trying to create, I guess, a new formula for festivals by requiring two-part COVID testing. So that's going to be a really interesting conversation because I feel like it's really mixed. Like Some people are totally for it. And obviously other people are still very hesitant about any sort of in-person gathering, whether no matter how many you know precautions are put into place. So let's talk about that in a little bit. And of course, new music. We're going to hear new stuff from Solomon, Rochelle Jordan, Nina Las Vegas. Hey, Maui Kraus. Thanks for joining. Hope you're well. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know if you're vibing to the song because I am. Um, so yeah. So let's get into it. I'm going to pause this wonderful, wonderful track, sadly, as we move into our first news story. Uh, But thankfully, it is a happy, happy news story as well. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about is that an official Carl Cox book is on the way. Obviously, all of us here love and know Carl Cox, the absolute legend. And It's not really a surprise at all that his new book is going to be called Oh Yes, Oh Yes. Honestly, when I saw the headline and before I even read anything about it, I was like, I bet the book is called Oh Yes, Oh Yes. And it is. And the book is coming out in August. And as you can tell from my little screen grab over here, it is very reasonably priced, only 17 pounds, which is awesome. You can pre-order it now. Um, This book was actually supposed to be released last year, but... Thankfully, it's coming out. It might have been delayed due to COVID. I'm not sure, but it is finally coming out. And of course, the book is going to be a hardcover book, you know, exploring his life and legacy from when he was an unknown warm up DJ, you know, in the acid house scene and to how he became this global headlining artist, you know, playing all over the world. And he is he was known he is known as the three deck wizard and king of Ibiza back when space was open. So I'm sure this book will be wonderful. And, you know, it'll make for a great coffee table book for any sort of dance music enthusiasts. Hey, everyone. Hi, Master X 3030. Oh, my God. Tuning in from Hawaii. That's so cool. That makes sense. Obviously, Maui Krause took me that long to put that together, but... <laughs> you know but um let me know are you guys gonna check out this book are you guys gonna pre-order it maybe you are already have pre-ordered it let me know i'm happy i love like good news because i feel like here on the news floor we've spent a lot of time talking about the necessary but sometimes tough news about covid and venues and stuff so i appreciate a little happy news on that end but speaking of which yes dan carl cox is a living legend we are stoked let me know. Are you going to buy his book? You let me know. 
So the next piece of news that we're going to talk about is this crazy, crazy idea that health passports to enter music venues are going to be trialed in the UK. This is really fascinating, honestly. Uh, this is something that over in the UK they're starting to think about. You know, we're entering into this great but also interesting phase of post-COVID. We're not quite there yet, but we're almost there post-COVID. Vaccines are being rolled out. People are starting to think about what the world will look like post-COVID when we can actually go out places again. But of course, we're always going to be conscious about keeping everyone healthy and safe, especially in the music space. That's always been a big priority for attendees, promoters, venue owners, you name it. So in the UK, they're thinking about creating these health passports. And currently, the one in question is designed by this app called UCheck which actually was originally launched in mid-2019 as a ticket and ID system, which was meant to kind of circumvent resellers who, you know, resell the tickets for super, super expensive, as well as trying to link promoters directly to their audiences. So kind of being that middle ground, you know, kind of like a ticket master, but, you know, for the people sort of thing. Um, but since the pandemic hit, the app actually pivoted to help users track test results and alerting people, for example, if they attended an event, with an, uh, with an infectious outbreak and then directing them to testing sites. So this kind of became a natural path, I think, for this app called UCheck. Uh, they're gonna be experimenting this with London's 100 Club and Bristol's Exchange. So those, those are gonna be the two first venues that are gonna host these initial test events in March which is coming up really quickly, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, those events are going to have 25% capacity with two sets of tests with the same people before they plan to then test these branches out to more venues across the UK. So this is a bit interesting, and I'm curious to hear what people's thoughts are in the chat. Feel free to drop and let me know what you guys think. Would you be happier if people required a health passport in order to attend shows? Like, would you be willing to do that in order to start going to shows earlier or would you rather wait until everyone's just fully vaccinated and things are totally back to normal before trying to rush this because this reminded me a lot about that story about Ticketmaster here in the U.S. who floated the idea of checking for vaccine status in order to attend concerts. I'm going to pull up that piece of news. It came out a couple months ago actually interestingly enough and uh the reception to this news when it came out was actually pretty poor, honestly, even though personally, I actually think it's totally fine. I, I would be willing to, you know, share my vaccination status in order to attend a festival down the line. But um, I totally understand why some people wouldn't. It does it does kind of cross into this gray area of revealing personal health. And uh, maybe you don't want to reveal that to a ticket organization like Ticketmaster. Uh, but yeah, the response after this news came out was pretty poor. People were really against this. And actually, I believe that Ticketmaster ended up rescinding this idea, even though it was still only in development when this news piece came out. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see what the reaction like is one in the UK two how it goes and how obviously, hopefully it is successful and everyone who attends those first test trials will remain healthy, but to be determined. What do you guys think? Similarly, the next piece of news is also related to COVID and also related to how a certain group of promoters are planning to try and come back in a post-COVID world. So Elements Music Festival is an event. It's kind of a boutique event that happens over in the East Coast. They're planning on going ahead in 2021 with a two-part testing plan. And their event is currently scheduled to take place over Labor Day weekend. So that's September 3rd and 6th, 3rd through 6th. Um, and the event is going to be a full-fledged festival, just like the old times, like the old times back in 2019. Um, the event's going to feature, you know, headlining DJs, art, interactive performances, um, and all sorts of activities like health and wellness stuff like yoga and such. And it's going to be taking place in Pennsylvania. So Elements Festival is actually a really interesting one. I actually wrote an article with Billboard about their trial version that they did um, back in 2020. Uh, they actually tried something called In My Elements, which was a scaled down 200 person version. And they required two-part testing. And 
they had an event and it went off apparently without a hitch. Uh, following after that event, they said they, they had to turn away two people because they did end up testing positive. Uh, but besides that, um, following up with all of the attendees who did actually attend the event, nobody got COVID. So it was a successful and healthy event. And that kind of was their case study into going into Elements Music Festival. Jeremy Grieve, I'm reading your comment talking about it's a sensible policy. I'm assuming you're talking about the last vaccination or health passport story. And I agree. I think it's a sensible policy. I think it's the same thing as, you know, when you go into a different country and sometimes you have to get certain shots in order to get on the plane to go to that country. Not much different. We just want to keep people safe, you know. But anyways, back to Elements Music Festival. So they are coming back in September with a full-fledged music festival, and they are going to be applying this two-part COVID testing protocol. And the way that it works is pretty interesting. So as a ticket buyer, you will be required to either attend in person, I believe, to a testing site somewhere in the kind of tri-state area um, nearby Pennsylvania. So they're kind of anticipating that most ticket buyers are going to be local to the area. You'll have to go, I believe it's two weeks before the event to get your first COVID test and make sure that comes back negative before you're actually able to be given the location of the event. And then once you actually drive out to the event, you will then also be given a rapid test at the door and you will not be able to leave your car until the results from that rapid test come back negative. And that's the way that they keep everyone safe, which two-part testing does sound pretty safe, honestly, but I get nervous thinking about how many people will be attending. If already they did a 200 person event, which seems like a lot nowadays for all of us who have been basically quarantining alone or with our families for like a year now, hopefully we've all been quarantining. <laughs> um, so it'll be really interesting to see how this works, how it sells. I'm sure people will be really excited. Um, the lineup is great. It just came out as this article says, Diplo, Chris Lake, Claude Von Stroke, uh, Rusko, Bob Moses, Desert Hearts Gang, they're all on board. So it's gonna be a big lineup. They're planning it, planning on it to be a big show. And I did appreciate the one caveat that they shared on their website that all tickets will be eligible for a refund should there be any sort of government instated shutdown. So it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. And a little preview hint for next week, we're actually going to be talking to the promoters of Elements Music Festival right here on the news floor. So if you have questions, deep burning questions about their festival protocol and how they're going to be putting everything together, come back next week and ask them live. It'll be good. I think we should be asking these people questions about how they're putting these things together. You know, I admire them for being pioneers. I don't think it's going to be easy for any of the first festivals or events that try to be the first that come back. Uh, so it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but let's just aim to keep people safe, you know? Okay, that's all for the news. I wanted to keep it light-ish this week because it's happy days over here. At least we're trying. Um, let's move on to music. So I like starting with Pete Tong's essential new tune. And this week we are going to hear it's a Solomon track. I feel like every release that Solomon has put out so far has been nominated as a Pete Tong essential new tune, which, you know, variety, Pete Tong. Come on. I'm just kidding. It's 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 a good song. We all know Sullivan's great. So this is Tuck Tuck. And this is, I believe, the third single from it. Um, come, came out with this video that, as you can already tell, has a vibe, a very specific vibe to it. But it's really cool. There's a whole theme to it. Uh, Inez, who is actually part of the group Atna. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I'm assuming that might be the wrong way to pronounce it. So I apologize if I am pronouncing it incorrectly. But Inez, who is in the group Atna, who um, Solomon collaborated with on this track, assumes the role of an assassin. This is an homage to Japanese Sukeban films, which sounds amazing. I'm not familiar with what Sukeban films are, but I can get an idea watching this video. And it's cool. Let's take a listen. Thank you. 
Don't you play me like OJ? You got nothing on my tooth. They got into what you took. Don't call out my body dick. Don't play chicken, bitch, you pay. You ain't fuck no China flag. You ain't pay, you give me taste. You give me taste, but honey, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I'ma write my tooth, 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 tooth. Wait, 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 wait. back from vibing i feel like the big trend right now is like a latin kind of flair and this definitely seems to fall into that category which to me feels really different for solomon but i like it i like maui krauss's a uh, little dancing emotes here that's exactly how i feel uh <laughs> I hope you're not talking about my dance moves because I don't know if you guys want to see my dance moves. I do I do a chair dance occasionally, but I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, yeah, I agree. It doesn't really sound like Solomon, does it? Something different, you know? We're all stuck in quarantine, right? Who knows? We're all, we're all here to try something new. All right, the next track that I'm going to show us is from the wonderful Rochelle Jordan, Toronto-based artist, and she has a new song called All Along, and thankfully, she gave us a little video intro about it, so I'm going to shut up and let you guys watch that. Hey, this is Rochelle Jordan. I'm a singer-songwriter from Toronto, Canada, and uh, I'm really excited that I get to share my new song all along with you um i'm really excited about the song actually because sonically it brings me back to a time before the coronavirus and before everything went into the trash um <laughs> before the masks and everything like that we were really having a good time and we were really free that's how the song makes me feel so i hope you feel the same way but um i wrote the song a couple years back and uh while i was in the recording and writing it at the same time i you know the main idea was you know speaking about a love that had been there the whole time and you finally discover it like that this is for real and it's actually been here this entire time but while i was writing it i also started to kind of reflect back on the relationship between me and myself so and that kind of completed the song so it's kind of weird how it came about but however you hear it i love it um but yeah i'm excited to share it with you so this is my new single, All Along. I really hope that you enjoy. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye. Okay, before I even play the track, I just got to say she has the most soothing, wonderful voice. I could listen to her talk about literally anything for however long. So <laughs> really appreciated that. And also I see somebody else is a fan of her. Jeremy Greaves says that she has one of the most soothing voices around. See? We are in agreement here, so let's listen to All Along without further ado. But I 
only found it west and east. I said, still on my mind, and me so good. Yeah, where did you feel where I wanna be? And now I'm out of the friend zone, what a feeling. I don't know why. I've been so. I did it again. I was still muted and I was talking the whole time. <laughs> if you guys were here last week, I did this last week. So I'm now two for two. Thank you, Bowie Kraus, for also shouting it out. Thank you, Mike, who is my behind the stage producer. Uh, if you were here last week, you know that I'm a chaotic live producer. So I'm just keeping that going. Um, anyways, I was saying that it's very hard to stop listening to the tracks even before they're done. And I'm really glad that we're all a big Rochelle Jordan fans because that was really vibey and very good. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We were also kindly gifted a little intro video from the remixer who is Jamie Silk. Um, the original track is Nina Las Vegas is Busy, which is gonna be really good. But again, I'm gonna shut up so we can hear from Jamie Silk. Hey Larry. This is Jimmy Silk, uh, live from Paris. So for those who don't know me, I'm a DJ, music producer, um, vocalist. You can uh, grab my new EP on Chill Not Fed called The Legend of Jack Johnson, brand new EP. And listen to this new remix I did for Nina Las Vegas called Buzzy. And uh, I think a lot of people in the club said know Nina and NLV record. You know, they were for me like this kind of vision in club music, mixing different type of elements, dance music, KDM, club music, you know, very forward thinking. And uh, during uh, the last confinement last year, I released a lot of EPs, I think one one every month. And um, one, the first one was called Moodboard, and I remember Nina tweeted about it. So when she asked me a few months ago to do a remix for a track, I was like, yo, for, for sure, you know, for... As I said in the club seat, Nina is like this person was really forward thinking with her music, you know. So I wanted to add my twists with the big drums, travel percussions, you know, like kind of melody, dramatic, emotional, and that's it. That's what we did, you know. So good. You know, another one of those people that just has a wonderful voice. So without further ado, here is the Jamie Silk remix of Busy. cool remix I feel like that's a really cool remix oh this part's cool too I'm not, I was gonna stop it but I think I'm gonna let it keep going for a little
I'm about to pull Michael up here. He's dancing. He's my behind the scenes producer and he's dancing. We're all vibing. <laughs> okay, that song is really, really good. I just haven't heard a song that sounds like that uh, that I can think of in recent recent memory. Nina Las Vegas is always kind of on the cutting edge of club music. She is always doing like something really different with her label, NLV Records. So wonderful to see what she's up to and also hear from Jamie Silk. So I want to know which track was your favorite this week? Solomon track, Rochelle Jordan, or the Jamie Silk Nina Las Vegas remix? Let me know in the chat. I want to hear from you. And I'm also going to give you a streaming recommendation this week. Let me just pause this little baby over here. Um, this week, if you missed it, there was the very first episode of Seth Troxler's residency happening on Beatport. And it's really cool. It's like in theme with the month of Black History Month, which is so wonderful. But obviously, Seth Troxler is an icon of the scene. And I love the way that they're kind of setting these up because it's going to be a weekly episode every week with Seth Troxler. And of course, he'll have a set with every one of these um, episodes that goes live on Monday. But he will also be bringing in different kind of figures and folks across music and current events landscape to just talk about whatever is on their mind. This past week, he had the American philosopher, political activist, and, you know, iconic voice, basically, Dr. Uh, Colonel what, Car Cornell West. Well, forgot what his first name there was for a second. Um, Cornell West. And I believe that we have a little clip of it. Let me play that for us to check out. Oh, it's, really, it's really incredible when we look at the cultural impact of, uh, the African diaspora and the black community in America on musical trends. I mean, if you look at, again, we got jazz, soul music, uh, gospel music, rock and roll, techno, you know, so often it's very much these in current contemporary times are constricted to the idea that black music is R and B and hip hop music, but we're actually the um, ignition, the igniter behind almost every cultural trend of the 20th century. And I think it's so important for people, especially today, to realize that uh, electronic music is also part of the Black story. Very cool little clip there. Me just double checking to see if I'm muted still, but I'm not. So <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear me because I think I'm not muted. Um, no, but very cool. That was a little clip of Dr. Cornell West and Seth Talks are talking. Uh, the way they set up these kind of residency shows is that he starts them off with an interview. And next week he has Chicago House music pioneers, Paul Johnson and Kay Alexi Shelby. And then the week after that, the godmother of house music, Stacey Hotwax Hale. So obvious, but you know, he's going to have some really wonderful folks on board. So be sure to go check that out because it's not only sets from him, but also some of those that I just mentioned, as well as, you know, rising artists like Channel, Channel Trace, DJ Holographic, both of which I'm a big fan of. So definitely go check that out. That's on Beatport's Twitch channel on every Monday. And I think because of the timing in the UK, it is in Monday morning Pacific time. So check that out over there. And then I am really excited because we are getting to the interview part of the show. But this week, I felt so honored that I got the chance to talk to these guys. Uh, if you haven't heard, Marshall Jefferson and Byron Stingley are coming back as 10 City, the first new music in 25 years. And the guys just bring such like an air of positivity. Um, that's like kind of what they've been preaching since they came together, since the group came together in 1987. Uh, they were the, the group behind some really iconic tracks like Devotion and That's the Way Love Is, which is the track I played in the intro. And they're coming back with a brand new album. And the single is out from the album. It is called Be Free. It is on Ultra Music. And we will play it after we run the interview. But Without further ado, let's get into the interview. Hello, Marshall, and hello, Byron. I am so excited to have you both. How are you guys doing? Oh, uh, we're doing good. great. Very, very, very excited to be here, Valerie. Where are you guys each calling in from right now? I'm in the south suburbs of Chicago. And I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the south of New Jersey. 
I love it. Yeah, you're in a color. You guys are both in colorful rooms, actually, colorful and well decorated rooms. Um, well, I'm so excited to have you guys here. I feel like in such like a momentous moment for your your careers. Uh, Ten City is back. Tell me about, you know, I think the question on everyone's mind hearing the headlines and reading the news that Ten City is back with new music is what inspires a decision like this, you know, to revive a group as iconic as Ten City after 25 or so years. Byron said, let's go. And I went. <laughs> <laughs> and it was that simple, right? I'm going to be talking in verse, by the way. I'm going to have long silences, uh, too. So, you know, I'm no worries. Now, We're moving at you. What it was. Well, uh, actually, in, in the head of uh, Ultra Records, Patrick Moxley and David Waxman, they reached out to us and they were saying, how would you guys like to, uh, would you guys be interested in doing another 10 City album? And and they basically asked for two things. They wanted us to re-record two of the songs, Devotion, and That's the Way Love Is. And they said, you can do whatever you want for the rest of the album. And the fact that uh, they gave us that freedom uh, to do what we want to do and to, and to do us because a couple other labels, believe it or not, it was funny. A couple other labels had reached out to, to me and they said, would you do a new album? But they said, we want you to work with this producer, this producer, and this producer. And in really 10 cities, uh, the concept was a self-contained group with Marshall doing the bulk of the production. And uh, and we could we feel that we could write good songs that we didn't even, if we felt that if it wasn't us writing and producing uh, most of it ourselves, it wasn't really a 10 city project. So they gave us the platform sure. to do what it is creatively to create a freedom to do and, what it is we love to do. And also they show a, a lot of enthusiasm for the project. You know, uh, uh, they really love, love the music and what we did in the past. And, uh, they showed a lot of confidence in us. And, uh, that was, that played a huge part also. Of course. Yeah. You have to, you have to connect with the right team all around, right? Not only, you know, together with you yeah. two, but also behind the scenes. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. You know, I love the, hearing that the story of the reuniting and the coming back together starts with, um, you know, recreating the iconic tracks from the past. But that also leads me to a question of, um, you know, there's an album coming soon. So I'd love to learn about what are the, the inspirations or maybe the stories that you guys we're trying to tell when you were coming together to create these new tracks as Ten City? Well, the stories that we're trying to tell is the story about even uh, just house music itself. And we don't feel that house music has received its, uh, its, its just position and, and far as like uh, just overall the, the, the amount of coverage that it receives. But when we tell the stories, house music is about love. It's about people accepting each other. Like when we used to go to parties back in, and unity. in Chicago. Unity most had, of all. Yeah. Unity you, is strengthening unity. the community. Yeah. I mean, you had like Chicago is a, it was, is a segregated city when growing up. If you're in a black neighborhood, you're in a black neighborhood, Hispanic, Puerto Rican neighborhood, Indian, Chinese, Italian neighborhood. But house music, when it, when it came on the scene in Chicago, was music that everybody came to those parties and partied together. And so we wanted to do music that encompassed uh, the spirit of people uh, coming together, working together and like, you know, just loving each other and accepting uh, each other. And Marshall came up with a great song called Come Come Together, which is actually a song on the album. We got songs like Come which, Together. Which we wrote album. together. Uh, Byron, uh, I, I had a kind of a different vibe going with, with lyrically and Byron changed that uh, completely to his present state, which is more universal love type vibe and togetherness vibe. So uh, I he, he took the song to an, another level. Amazing. Well, thank you. But in the first single is titled- uh, I'll insult titled, you again after we get off this. <laughs> we, we like- <laughs> I'm not used to him giving me compliments. We like really like talk about each other. We've been doing it for 30 years. You know, we, we you know, we, <laughs> so we, we tab at each other. Like, did he just give me I know, I could, I could sense that, Byron. Oh, you were a little taken aback. I, was yeah, like, I, I, I only treat him nice in front of people. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I uh, love it. 
right. Well, so we have a song called Be Free. We have songs like uh, I Feel It Too. They're all like just positive, uh, positive song. And the album is going to be titled Judgment. And we also like to show an alternative to like to to uh, like 30 years of negative uh, lyrical stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 as opposed to using certain terms that are used in the ghetto, we didn't want to use any of that. We wanted to uh, have things more positive, you know, call lady or lady or, and, 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 and things like that. And uh, just to provide an alternative, you don't have to be, you know, crude and rude a lot, a, a, a lot of times to get your sure. point across. Yeah. And you don't have to be, and you don't have to, uh, you know, talk tough to, you know, like a lot of people don't know this. Marshall was a, actually a boxer and people like, but we know, still know how to be kind to uh, people and things like that. And we don't have to like put that bravado uh, and things like that in music. So we believe in, uh, in just, diffuse in any situation negative situation we try to we've always marshall has even taught me that he's like kind of one of those gurus or something on peace and he's always talking like he's uh you know the black john lennon sometime is what i refer to him <laughs> as. we've all we've been giving each other advice back and forth for 30 30 plus years you know he's told me things that has helped had of that have helped change my life actually you know uh, and and I'm, I'm sure like vice versa in a lot of cases. You know, Absolutely. We, even when we weren't making music together, we were making uh, music separately and Byron was having number one hits. And, uh, you know, I was doing my thing, DJing. And, uh, you know, we would still talk back and forth and give each other advice. Yeah, I can definitely feel, I mean, I feel the positivity and the wisdom even in just hearing you guys telling me. So honored honored to be part of the conversation and really excited. You know, it's something I was thinking about as I was preparing to talk to you guys is I imagine that in a really kind of strange way, there's probably a lot of parallels between, you know, the late eighties, early nineties, when 10 city first released those tracks to now, you know, what you were describing about people, people who were really segregated or communities that were really segregated, finding this kind of togetherness on the dance floor. I feel like we're, we're totally coming into an era of that right now as well, where, you know, political unrest or uh, racial injustice, things, these conversations that we've all been kind of having over the past year or so. And it feels like also with COVID, when we're all stuck at home, once things kind of, once, once we emerge out of our houses, people are really going to be looking for that positivity in that moment on the dance floor as well, I think. Absolutely. It's been the, house, house, it's, the, house dance, the house dance floor has always been united. I mean, it's always been nonviolent, always been uh, everything on the, you know, all races, creeds, colors on the on the house music dance floor without with, the, with no regard at all mm -hmm. for race. And it's, it's just one race, the human race. And it's always been that way. And, uh, you know, you go to like some other parties and you have like the metal detectors and you have the pad downs and, and uh, <clears throat> I, I, you're at, I know the, the chosen few picnic in Chicago would have like 50, 50 to 100,000 people and you'd have no security and you wouldn't need any security because there's not gonna be any fighting there. It's, it's, that's the, the culture of house music, it's nonviolent, this unity. And, and people just have a good, good, a good time dancing. So uh, that's what we're trying to expose people to. And we think it's time for it, you know, just the fact that even, like we said, Ultra Records uh, reached out for us at this time. And uh, it was, it's just, uh, we just feel good energy around this whole project and the songs and, and things like that. And we weren't, we're not even trying to worry about uh it'd be great to have hits but we just want to do songs that really feel good to us when we were creating it and we hope that that uh those that those positive vibes and positive thoughts you know we want to do songs that people can dance to on the floor and it makes them feel good and then when they come back and listen to the messages in the songs without being political it's things there to get people to really like look at life and uh and how you know how just how sometimes how, well, I, I'll keep it positive, just how, how, you know, how things should be, you know, and it's messages in there in our songs, like subtle, subtly, 
Uh, we don't believe in, at least I don't believe in hitting people over the head with beliefs, but I believe in uh, subliminally and subtly, uh, you know, just being a positive uh, light for people. Yeah. Everybody just wants to be free. You know, it's like, uh, don't don't tell them what to be. Let them be what they want to be. Yeah, I love that. I think, um, I mean, I've talked to several artists over the past few months of, you know, where people's head spaces are at, even creating music, especially kind of coming from the dance music space where a lot of people are used to making these big, momentous kind of songs and everyone kind of is coming back to this feeling of just wanting something positive whether it's revisiting like older sounds or traditional like beloved tunes or acts or something like that so i feel like this is the perfect time for 10 city for this new album for the new music and i'm really excited i hope that also it's a perfect time not only to listen to the music when it comes out but also to hopefully very soon be dancing and celebrating on an actual dance floor with people and enjoying it out in real life. So congrats to you both on the new music and on 10 City Everything. I'm super excited to have the world hear the whole album and appreciate your both of your time so much. Thanks, Valerie. Hope to see you on the dance floor soon. Me too. So much. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, Byron. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Aren't they just the cutest? I feel like they're just the cutest. Um, shout out also to Marshall, who is recovering from pneumonia. Um, he is out doing press, even post pneumonia. So, you know, champion, truly a champion. So without further ado, let's listen to the brand new song. It is called Be Free. <laughs> Happiness is a basic right. basic right, the right to live with dignity. Why would anybody want to take that from me? How about I respect you and you respect me? And together, like love, laughter, and liberty, I expect that, and I want that for everybody. You be you. Let me be me, and everybody wants equality, free to love, free to give. I just want to live this life I live. Everybody, everybody, everybody wants to be free, wants to be free. Everybody, like Michael's jamming. Everybody wants to be free. Wants to be <laughs> oh, I just got to catch a volume. <laughs> <laughs> Searching for a better situation. I feel the only way out is to change the things I think about. I wish that it, it is a dance party. Thank you. It's kind of cross. You're right. Reality. See, sometimes I told Michael, I said, sometimes it gets lonely when I'm just here jamming by myself. So I'm, I just got to pull him in every episode one time when I catch him jamming as well. Um, so this is the brand new track from 10 City, Be Free. You listen to the lyrics. I feel like it perfectly captures the vibe of what they were saying. You know, I think we need this positivity. We need a good place to come together on the dance floor. So... Keep an eye out for the album that's coming out soon. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the News Floor here. It's always so fun. It's fun to hang. And like I mentioned earlier, next week, we actually will be having the promoters and the organizers of Elements Festival, which I talked about earlier in the news section. Uh, they're going to be putting on, I think, what might be the very first kind of large scale event here in the U.S. Uh, as far as music events go. Uh, so definitely tune in. Tell your friends who are curious about it uh, to bring questions. And we will get down to the bottom of how this is all going to work in this crazy post-COVID world. 
But with that being said, uh, keep up with us on the social channels. We are at Lost Resort TV on Instagram, on Twitter, at the News Floor, and I am at Valerie Lee with hella underscores underneath. There's three underscores, so it's Valerie underscore 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 Lee. And without with that, I say goodbye. Thank you for joining us in another episode. I'll see you next week.